Hi guys, Jens Johansson, owner of J2 Building Consultants, coming you, to you today with a little webinar on, on some condominium water damage that we're seeing out of one of our office, office locations, in the, specifically in the Utah market. And wanted to come just share some photos and talk about some issues that we're seeing and, and put this little webinar together for you for some educational information. Uh, at, at J2, we're architects, engineers, and project managers. Uh, we're, we're not contractors in the sense that we, we're not pounding nails. Uh, we help our clients identify and then fix building issues on their buildings. And the, 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 the impetus of this webinar is that we're seeing a real high level of excessive water damage, if you will, out of our Utah markets. We've also got staffed offices in, in Washington and Oregon. And so we just kind of want to do maybe a little compare and contrast, uh, maybe just share some of this information to help help our clients and help educate the public uh, and even even help educate the contractors, uh, help them build, build better and um, help those who are doing a good job spread that news and, and maintain that level. We appreciate it. And then maybe even stimulate some uh, public effort to get some legislation passed for a little bit of a... a a more similar condominium act that provides these additional protections of, you know, having a professional involved, uh, having some periodic oversight and inspection, performing some water tests during construction or during repairs, just to make sure everything goes together correctly. Uh, a lot of surrounding states have those have those laws already, and and Utah can look to those for some some better ideas. So. Uh, I am clearly coming to you from uh, the home office. I call it the bunker. And uh, we are in week four of our stay at home, if you can, uh, order in Washington State. And when we go out and about, we, we practice our social distancing. And so we hope you are as well. We hope you're safe. Um, and uh, we hope to be through this shortly. But here's uh, about 15 minutes of some photos. And hopefully it's, hopefully it helps you. This is a presentation all about Utah projects. Uh, I, I love our Utah office. It's gorgeous. Um, our local folks down there love coming up to the other offices just for fun, but they love going home too. I mean, just look at that. It's beautiful. You guys already know how beautiful it is. So anyway, I will get on with that. So we're going we're gonna to take you through a series of projects here, and they're, they're all condominiums. And this project starting with is in Mill Creek. Uh, we just finished a uh, full-scale repair on this project. Um, so here, here's what it looked like. Here's the front of the walkways. And we've got walkways and recessed areas. And, and uh, this building is primarily stucco, but it had some eaves uh, components to it. That's the styrofoam. And it also had some stone cladding on the bottom of it. But when you look at this from the parking lot level or the ground level, you don't see a lot of things going on other than to the trained eye. Uh, I'm really wondering how this walkway flashing meets the column. You can see it's, it's kind of hanging out there. It looks like it's an open gap and it actually was. And so after we pulled off some of this cladding, you can see the walkway damage. So let me take you through, this is a busy picture. Let me take you through some glossary here and, and tell you what's what. So this is that uh, wall or similar location. So here's your two by sixes or two by fours that are holding up the, holding up the floors. Uh, that is the OSB sheathing. So think of it like plywood, it's structural sheathing. And then we get down to timber beams or beams that hold up our walkways. We have exterior gyp sheathing. That's the gray paper face gyp sheathing. You can see the bright shiny nail heads. This area isn't getting wet. It's under a walkway above it. However, the inside corner of that walkway is a tough place to waterproof because you're folding it around a corner. And so you can see the water flowing down the walls there. Uh, you can also see some water on the, on the black building paper below this walkway. Here's your soffit material of the walkway. Um, so here's your OSB sheathing on that column, and here's your exterior gyp sheathing below that. So the primary piece of the exterior gyp sheathing is to provide 
uh, some fireproofing and uh, it's a lot like your interior drywall. It's paper faced with a gypsum core. And we all know that paper and water don't get along. So when the water flows in at that walkway to column location, flows in, it damages this beam. These are holding up your walkways. It damages your sheathing. That's, that's holding up the structure that does that. And then your gyp sheathing is your fireproofing. That's, that's crumbled off. Uh, you can see black and white. Um, it's a, a big indication of water damage. So looking at, a, at the next location, here's some striations in the beam. They're clearly just soaked up, lots of black water damage. Uh, some framing members there just peeling off. Your gyp sheathing has lost its paper facing and crumbled. Um, this is another area below, below a walkway on the outside edge. Water is just flowing down these, these uh, columns. Here is a roof bump out. Here's one of our guys poking his pocket knife into some plywood sheathing. You can see the nails. This is just really decomposing. Um, lots of water damage going on here. Here's, here's roof curb framing that is just, this was a combination of roof, roof issues and cladding issues that led to, led to those problems. Uh, this is the bottom post base of your walkway railing and you've got one bolt and that one bolt is is going into just plywood sheathing it's not even going into the framing of the product and so when that deck membrane isn't waterproof correctly around this post base it looks like it was just run up to the post base and not underneath it uh, any kind of water that gets in there just softens up that deck sheathing and the railing falls right off uh, you can see the water damage on the, again, the OSB and the gyp sheathing. Now we're down into the stone area. You don't see a lot of indications of, of staining. There's a little bit. There's some cracks and a few little drips. But uh, look at the condition of the framing under these windows. Um, that's what's left of your gyp sheathing. That's what's left of the OSB. And here's some two by four structure that's trying to trying to hold up the building. Uh, you can see it in both sides there. Yeah, this is a better, this whole corner under the window, around the mechanical, you know, vent, you can see the water damage on the, on the gyp sheathing and then all the way down below into the framing. Here we can just grab handfuls of structural sheathing and pull it out. So extensive water damage here. Here's a project over in South Jordan. Um, this this was a stucco and eaves project. You can see the white foam of the eaves, but you can see the water damage on the window sills. We've got some kind of penetration flashing here, but it's not effectively working. The water is leaking out. You can actually see here's the here's the eaves line and the sealant that made up that window sill, and it's actually covering. The window weep. So the window weep is designed to be exposed and draining, but here it was totally blocked with cladding material and and uh, just really causing causing some trapped water. Uh, on another location in uh, South Jordan as well, we've got some water damaged sill plates, some water damaged studs. Here's here's a header above a window, so water is flowing down this wall. Same same location, kind of a close up of that header. It's this is solid wood that's decaying away, water damaged. Uh, here is your floor diaphragm uh, that that's, has some extensive water damage to it, some sill plates and some studs and two by fours, heavily damaged by water intrusion. Here's a project over in Harriman. Uh, roof to wall locations, these are, these are uh, common on all buildings, but we're seeing a lot of, a lot of water intrusion, specifically in Utah, as far as uh, getting that roof flashing integrated with the wall flashing is a, is a real important thing. It's usually two different trades. Um, and so just having that uh, integration between those two. So you'll see water can get in, flow right down and just really hammer the framing here. Um, your OSB is damaged Your Again, your uh, layer, it looks like stucco. 
uh, under the under some trim. But this metal strap is an indication of this is a key structural corner in the building, and we're trying to strap that together, and it's it's just nailed into mush. Uh, here's the edge of your beam, heavily heavily damaged. Here's some more framing. You can see this is a real deal. Uh, <clears throat> again, Harriman here, we're looking at some stone. Now we can start seeing some white efflorescence, some staining. This is the salts that's in the stucco that starts coming out. Um, and uh, in this stone area, we pulled some stone and you can see the water damaged again, OSB sheathing. Important note about the moisture meter we're using, that pegs out at 40. That is the maximum reading. So a dry reading is 12. And so what that tells us is a lot of water is in there and a lot of water is currently in there. And so it's an active leak and it's very wet. Here's another roof to wall. What I want you to look at here is brown stains coming down the siding at this location and in other, lo in other photo locations, the sun's shining in here, but you'll see lots of micro cracking of the stucco. <clears throat> and so we pulled off some stucco and guess what? Here's, here's again, just really water damaged uh, OSB sheathing, uh, white, black, all sorts of different colors. But this is, this is pretty bad. We can take a, a dull spatula. This is a, a, a dull instrument. Think of like your painting spatula. And we're just pushing it right through the structural sheathing. That should be hard. It re usually requires hammer and nails to pound through it, but we can just push that right through there. It's also, again, wet. Here's your 40 maxed out meter reading. <clears throat> here's a project over in Holiday. Uh, here's a crawl space. Had some drainage issues. It's getting into the crawl space. You can see the water damage on the gyp sheathing, on the framing, uh, just flooding into the crawl space there. Project over in South Jordan. This one is very, uh, it's very evident, the cracks and the white stains. So see the white efflorescence, see these little white, it's just, it's like water is pouring through the stucco and, and that the white is an indication of, of salts in the stucco that's coming through. Um, so this is a upper deck, here's a deck door. And so you've got two deck drains, um, but you've got a deck on the other side of that. So there would be a deck membrane. And so where the deck membrane meets the wall, you can see we, we most likely have membrane to wall flashing issues. It is soaked all the way through the wall. Uh, this is the beam that holds up the deck uh, and we can push a, push a screwdriver right through it. Speaking of beams, here's a project over in Sandy. Here's some front beams holding up some decks. Um, this beam was not weatherproof correctly. It doesn't have any WRB on it. It just has siding and some flashing cap. Uh, flashing wasn't sealed. And so water is just pouring through the metal joint. It's also pouring through where the deck meets the beam. Here is the glue lamb beam itself that is delaminating on each lamination and it's also water damaged. You could take a screwdriver and pry it apart. Over in this corner, I'm able to use my fingers and pull out chunks of beam. So we've got, got water damage going on here. Uh, South Jordan, another similar kind of deck. Um, and this is, this is interesting to note. So on this side of the deck, lots of water damage. On that side, it actually looks pretty clean. And so kind of one of the reasons you want to be doing a little bit more of an investigation, just, you know, let's pull that piece of trim off. Let's see what's going on under it because a few feet away, heavily damaged. And so this is likely a leaking deck. Roof uh, soffits, you can see the, see the white and brown water staining coming through it. Uh, you can see the wet sheathing, wet framing. Another project in South Jordan, uh, stucco building. You can see underneath a window, we've got window leaks that are now damaging deck to wall locations. You can see these stains coming below that. You can see some cracking, um, 
this project had a lot of swollen trim on it. Again, these stains and cracks aren't necessarily indications of damage, but they're, they're good symptoms to look, look for when you walk around your building. Uh, here's the side of that deck. We can, in this case, it's a chisel, but still we can just hand push it into the deck beam. So this deck was not waterproofed correctly to prevent that. Here's a project over in Draper. You can see where uh, you can see these brown stains again coming from above. You can see cracking stucco, like lots of micro cracks. It's just a bunch of hairline cracks. Um, and then when we did a little opening into the into the stucco, you can see the water damaged um, OSB. You can see the here's that uh, another structural strap that's all rusty. There's lots of water on the back side of the WRB there, weather resistive barrier. Or another window, this is a different location, but just different side. Uh, again, you can see lots of cracking, lots of staining. And we get into this OSB that's white and black and all sorts of different colors from water intrusion. Um, moisture meter reading again, 23.5, dry was 12. So again, telling us it's active and it's, it's wet. So here's a project over uh, just south of downtown. Had, had lots of uh, rooftop decks. And so we helped them with a rooftop deck, deck replacement. Here's inside someone's unit. You can see these water stains running down the interior drywall. And this obviously had a big blister on the ceiling. But this is your deck roof or your deck sheathing. It's just wet. We've got lots of different colors in there and, and even some electrical that might be getting water on it. And up in Park City, we've got some Got some uh, flashing. Here's a base of wall flashing condition. And the important piece of this is that our weather resistive barrier is reverse lapped with the metal flashing. And so water's designed to run down this, run down the flashing and run out and drain properly. And in this instance, it's reverse lapped. So it would be like your rain coat tucked into your rain pants. So obviously your pants would get wet because it's that reverse lap there. So lots of corrosion there too. That's, that's not, we don't like seeing that. Um, and then some, some stain trim there as well. So this, this has been a few, a few buildings, you know, a few different buildings in the Utah market where we're seeing lots of damage. And uh, these buildings, some of them are three years old, but most of them are less than 10. And, uh, if you're like if you're like me, you expect your home to last at least as long as the mortgage takes to pay off, and so it's a little frustrating uh, for to see our clients struggling with thousands of dollars in repair assessments uh, on on a relatively new home. Uh, I don't I don't want to pick on the Utah market for booming economies. I mean, every booming economy you see uh, building departments over overstretched. You see. Lots of lots of contractors growing and hiring on multiple crews, and maybe maybe the expertise doesn't reach from crew one to crew two because of lack of training time. Um, you always see low bid mentality, which is a struggle. But you know it 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 doesn't have to be this way. And so the point of today's webinar is to teach you to look for a few of these things on your own building, and then really consider using a third party consultant such as us to help you put together good waterproofing plans, help you put these projects out to bid uh, for multiple bids and help you interview, interview bidders and then enter into good contracts, uh, working with your HOA attorneys and, and then getting this project launched right and then getting it inspected along the way and then in the end getting it all buttoned up and, and all your warranty information is in the right place and, and all your T's are crossed and I's are dotted, so to speak. So um, if you have questions about your building, go to our website, check out our contact page. We, we can always jump on a free call with you. Uh, in, you know, in this quarantine world, we're doing lots of these virtual Zoom meetings. And uh, you know, we've even got a service now of, of, of a virtual consultant call where you can walk around with your phone and say, you know, hey, is this an issue? Or should I be worried about this or not? And so lots of ways to lots of ways to help you with that. So hopefully this was educational and hopefully it gives you some things that you can look for on your building. So we look forward to working with you. Thanks for watching.